Okay, so we're stood outside of GT Factory Racing. We're gonna do a truck tour and have a look around, see what's going on. Moving back, you've got four benches. Um, this will be a mechanics area who's up on the course right now. Then moving back from here, we have Mark Morrison. He's working with Martin Mays, um, the enduro phenomenon, and downhill rider this weekend. I'm Belgian. Yeah, I'm Belgian. Uh, Rachel Atherton's bike here. Joe's up on the course. And then last but not least, we've got Pete. He's working with G. He's got his bike set up here. Moving across here, they've got a warm-up area. Super important, they'll warm up both for practice, re qualifying and race. So uh, when the riders come in from practice, they want to just chill out, talk to the mechanics, dial the bike in, have a drink. There's a bit of a chill out area here for them. This is a good, this is a good point here. Any information through the weekend, the schedule will be put here so everybody knows when the practices are, course walk, all those different things. Race and qualifying times will be put up for each rider so they know exactly what they've got to do. And they even come down to the times that they need to start the warm up, finish warm up, leave the pits, etc. All that time will be calculated in and scheduled here. So come on inside, you're going to enter into the kitchen area. So there won't be a lot of cooking done in here. They have a chef that does that um, at the rider's accommodation. So basically this will be maybe a little bit of preparation for lunch that they do in here. They've got a sink for cleaning glasses. Obviously, coffee and tea facilities are absolute must. Keep the, keep the riders going, and most importantly, keep the mechanics going. They work long hours. So obviously, hydration is key. Loads of water up top, pasta, uh, bit of fruit juice. We're getting down to more, the more important stuff. Um, this is the mechanics hydration down the bottom. As I mentioned, there's a big Belgian stronghold within uh, Atherton Racing, and uh, Duval is pretty heavily covered on the bottom shelf. Milk for tea and coffee, a few couple of, couple of different sauces to go with lunches. So yeah, it's a pretty stacked fridge. Riders cupboards. So this is G's cupboard here, Rachel's here, Taylor's here, and Martin Mays' cupboard here. This actually used to be my cupboard, but not anymore. Um, let's just have a quick look in here. Okay, so. She's got a poster inside, new kit, new pads, trainers, a few bags of stuff that's ready. That might be extra lunch and food that's just stored there for the time being. Moving along, Rachel. She's got a few inspirational comments here. Her dog, Angus, with uh, quite a sad little face. Uh, new shoes, Red Bull hats, gear, coat, and a foam roller. All the guys using foam rollers, stretching a lot after practice, before practice, they'll try and keep on top of that. This is Taylor's. Oh yeah, I had a feeling this might be a little more messy. He's got his kit all organized, then his pads, his phone, keeping contact with the girls, gloves, helmet down the bottom, and uh, some more shoes. It's pretty organized for Taylor. He's tidied his stuff up. Okay, Martin. Mine's not got much. He's got a toothbrush. Goggles, sunglasses, not going to need them in Scotland. Uh, jersey, a Belgian, eats baked beans, good man. Um, yeah, then we've got shoes here in the bottom, socks, pads. Oh, this is quite key. This is an ice vest. A lot of guys are using those in hot weather, but um, rules are shoes off upstairs. So follow me up. As you can see, it's pretty plush up here. Uh, we've got coat hangers here up on the wall. Uh, riders can chill out, a bit of peace and quiet. It's a lot quieter than outside as the weekend gets busier. You sometimes want to just come and hide inside here. Um, we often used to sit here, riders will sit here, get the screen on, perhaps review practice footage that they've got, see where they might be making mistakes, compare between each other, you know, different line choices using head cams and so on. So that's a really cool area up here. Uh, as you can see, it's air conditioned, so you can keep it nice and cool, especially when racing. Um, not so much here in Fort William, but in hotter climates. To my right here, we have a bathroom. So there's a toilet here on the left, the sink in the middle, and there is a small shower there that you could, um, even the riders use it during the day when they get covered in mud during practice. So, so back here, there's a uh, room for the mechanics to sleep in. Actually, luxurious comfort. Uh, Super plush. I used to nap in here uh, between races. Oh, well, I was just having five minutes. 
Okay, so now we're back down the stairs, through the kitchen, past the riders' lockers, and we are into the workshop. Okay, so this is where all the mechanics store everything. As you can see, there's all drying racks here, wet races. They really want to sort of hang stuff up to dry, try and get it as dry as best they can. As you can see, all the way down here, we've got drawers. Each individual mechanic has their own little storage of, of parts, you know, special little intricate parts that might be connected to a certain rider. Um, the first one I can see here is pedals. So they run Crank Brothers mallet pedals, clips, clip ones. As you can see, there's loads of those. Moving up here, we've got brakes, Saint brakes are a big Shimano team running sort of a full Shimano kit. So yeah, plenty of spares there. Brake pads in here. So we've got a mixture here. We've got brake pads, both the standard brake pad and also the Ice Tech finned ones. Seats, loads of seats, carbon rails. That's pro, also Shimano. A couple of pairs of brakes still there. Overflow from the drawer below. Okay, so rotors. Obviously the rotors have a really hard time. They're hard on the brakes going super fast. So they can cook rotors, need plenty of spares. They get bent to the big rocks on this course for sure. They'll get through a lot of those. And then last but not least in the top here we have, as you can see, a selection of stems. Also, this is the Atherton Signature Pro range. We've got grips, various different grips, load of handlebars, and then further over here is some seat posts. So. Um, Moving along here, we have chains in the top. The, the boys are putting out a lot of power. They really will give a chain a hard time. Perhaps you might not think that they're doing a lot of miles on a chain, but the chain is really having a lot of hammer over the rough stuff, and it wears them out really fast, so they'll be replacing a lot of chains. Okay, so this is cassettes. So we've got XTR cassettes. We've got a few chain rings there few mixture cassettes they might actually change the ratios to try and get the gears that they need um, loads more chain rings there as you can see loads of different options uh, 36 and 38 is probably the most popular yeah there's a 38 there what's this one 36 also so they need the clearance but then also they need the gearing to get to those higher speeds so this is shifters obviously only rear derailleurs on a dyno bike loads of those Quite a delicate part of the bike can often get damaged. Shifters, there's only three. Uh, this one's, there's a lot of stuff going on in here. We've got uh, rim strips, sort of stands tape, all different sort of tapes for tubeless. And then there's some Saint hubs here, rear hub, front hub, there. So, cranks, loads of Saint cranks here. These are parts for chain devices, the bash plates, um, which are sort of in individual to which foot forward the rider rides. So you'll put that on the appropriate side. Obviously the bikes get a full strip down. So these are sort of like, these are what I call sort of the interesting bits. These are the small little bits, fancy, you know, got axles there, bearing sort of presses, loads of various different bearings for headsets different headsets, perhaps they change the offset head angles. Dropouts, various different dropouts for bikes. Okay, so take a look in this one. Um, these are all titanium bolts. They're probably like five or six pounds each. Really expensive. Loads of different sizes of tie. A few other little small nice little bits. There's a lot of money's worth in that box there. Up here on my right, helmet dryers. Obviously you get hot and sweaty when you're riding in the sun. You need to dry your helmet off. And the same applies to when you're riding in the mud. You wash them down, put them on these helmet dryers. They also dry shoes as well. It's a really handy thing to have. Nice to put a nice dry helmet on. Now this up here is like the basement, if you like, but obviously upstairs or the attic. We'll call it the attic. The attic of the trailer. As you can see, this is all for storage. It's fair to say that they've definitely got enough tires. Let me just get up here. Oh God, my jeans are... I've got my Matt Stevens jeans on, they're a bit tight. Right, so we've got spare wheels all the way across the top here. Tires in an absolute abundance. This is a tire for use on a turbo trainer, so it's nice and quiet. Um, rims, as you can see, loads and loads of rims. They've got fans down there, 
not not like screaming fans. These are cooling fans. Um, Red Bull here. Loads of different types. Muck off hoses. Yeah. Apparently, I've actually seen it myself. You can drive a car into here. It's uh, that big if it doesn't look as big as it as it might be on the video. Okay. So now we've got to get down. Okay. So that pretty much rounds up our tour of GT Factory Racing. As you can see, it's a pretty slick setup. If you'd like to watch more videos from GMBN, please click up here for more of our pro team truck tours and click down here for our pro bike series. As you can see, these boys are not messing around. They're running a really cool, slick, professional setup. And for more videos from GMBN, don't forget to click on me to subscribe. Toodle pip.